Hello, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, around the world. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. Um, today's video, um, it was sent to me by a friend of mine. And I looked at it and I thought, isn't this cute? A three-year-old, he can write, he can spell, he knows maths. But then... When you look below the surface, I was listening to his parents who seemed so frustrated because schools are not accepting him. They're charging them for assessments and they're having a challenging time on what to do with a child that is gifted and who's well beyond his ears, his years. So I'm going to show you the video and then I'm going to let you have my two pence worth. Comments will always be appreciated. Jesus. <laughs> when we found out he was doing all of these things from I me, mean, was one plus. Mm -hmm. We said, all right, then we're going to try to get him out there and people see him and give, give us the help. So we went to, we called you, you know, and you gave us till one year, you know, waiting list we were on, you know, just to do the assessment that you were. Know. And when we go there now, after the one year now, after I reach two now, they are saying that they have us in our room asking us questions about him. We are giving our answer. Then they are saying that, okay, he's high function artistic. They learn like, they don't learn like average kids. Their brain moving so fast, that's why they, they slow on my building speech and everything. And they don't really interact as much and all of these things. So... That's what they're saying. Then now they're saying that, all right, then, we're not, you're supposed to do two more tests, but you have to go back on a waiting list again for maybe a next year again to do that. Or you can pay X amount of money to speed up the process at somewhere else and thing. When we contact the place that they told us about, to say, all right, then, they said 15000 to do the first one, then 30000 for the next one, then 12000 for the other one. And they said the first one now for 15000 is a verbal thing like what we did at you we already so i said why don't you use the the same um assessment that you did before so we can just go in and just pay the 30 to mm -hmm. do that assessment that is is needed for him that we go there and uh, ask a question about the same things again so to me it's 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 rubbish because we don't have it like that to constantly have pay 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 pay, pay all over the place and he's not getting the assistant that, that um that he needs but it's 10 times 8. Good boy. But it's 10 times 9. Good boy. Before he born, I, I download 2 to 10 times for him. It was yeah, and I said, all right then. So you were pleased that while it was just Yeah, before. and like That's putting him to bed and everything. So um, after 1 plus, we find out, found out that he knew from 2 to 10 times. Like he literally can write it. And then afterwards, no what? But weren't you fascinated when you saw him writing? I mean, he's a one year Yeah, but you see, because we, we saw his growth, mm -hmm. it wasn't that wow to us like everybody else. Because mm -hmm. even now, when you see him doing all this, you're like, okay. Because yeah. we, we saw the, the transition to now. But um, it's still amazing based on a lot of things like Spanish that he know mm -hmm. that we never taught him. And like opposite the words. YouTube, you know, to use the computer. He teach me some stuff on the computer that I didn't, that he, that he even know. No, I think called Maths Antics. Maths Antics. Yeah, he teaches CXE Maths. Yeah. So that's where he got um to know about the the, the fractions, because he can do fractions and, you know, um square, square root. And you know, like, you know, like octagon, all those, yeah. Yeah, you, know all those it's you know every color. Come. Good yeah. boy. Yeah. To to work with. Oh, I've tried a lot, but and most of them just tell you straight up they cannot teach it. Yeah, but right. others, others say yes they can, and when you take him there, it's like you have to come back for him again. We have to be up late at night doing research on what to teach him and. How to teach him because. Okay, 
Everybody. Have you contacted Ministry of Education? We contacted everybody. It's like you, you, you talk to persons and they say they're going to get back to you. But remember, you know, he's getting older. So, if, forever. So, it's like when, when it, you contact them more than once and it's like, yes, remember, we're going to get back to you. We're going to get back to you. Even a simple interview on the TV with him. I know that I've been contacting person and they say they're going to get back to me. And I know. So, I'm saying, why is it he's blessed with this gift? And they're not trying to, to like foster that for, I don't know. Kids like yourself, right? mm -hmm. most of the kids are and that is and that is the challenge because even if we had, even if we heard of schools that may be able to teach him, they're telling us like a hundred and thousand every three months and all these. No, things. yeah, hundred and thousand a month. Some is three months, yeah. like in Kingston, and we live in Spanish town, mm -hmm. so. And we don't have it like that. <clears throat> because even if you're in a good job, you still cannot pay for the school. So what is going to happen to him? He's a square of 16. Square root of 16. Oh, good boy. What is two square? Good boy. I want him to get the right education, like, because we cannot teach him more than what we can teach him. And maybe there's a lot of kids out here like him that no one know, knows about. And those kids are um, from poor families that cannot afford to send their kids to these private schools. So they end up sending the child to a regular school, whereby teachers are going to say that this child is misbehaving and parents do not teach the child good and stuff because they're not challenging the kids. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to um, see the whole video, um, there's about two or three of them on YouTube. Just put in three-year-old Jamaican child genius. Anything, any kind of combination of that phrase. Um, like I said, it on the, on the one side, it looks fantastic. You know, you have people looking at the child and saying, oh, he's brilliant. It's fantastic. How does he do that? And on the other hand, you're kind of thinking, you know, there's poor parents. They are limited in what they can teach him. And maybe even the teachers themselves feel limited if he is above his his age. So um, I did write down a few notes, as I usually do. Um, what is gifted? Some of the traits of being gifted like that child is they have a wide vocabulary um, retentive photographic memory, extremely curious, and a vivid imagination. Now, I don't know if by um, teaching children through phones and electronic devices actually accelerates their knowledge, and as opposed to how we were taught, you go into the classroom and you look at the board and it's done at a very slow pace. So I'm not quite sure because um, the father was saying that he downloaded this um, mathematic antics or something um, from the child was born. So he could have actually programmed the child to accelerate actually inadvertently. Um, but I don't know. I don't know whether the child is naturally gifted or whether it has been accelerated through technology. Um, but if that was the case, there'd be so many. But mind you, a lot of the children today, they do seem to be way above their years, especially when they're literate with um, technology. Um, the parents are obviously confused and frustrated, and when they're trying to help, um, it's costing them left, right and centre. I don't see why it should. They should have gifted and talented coordinators in schools. They should have dedicated teachers to deal with children who are above the norm or who are considered above the norm, who are exceptionally bright. Um, it's easy to compare uh, children like that with others. And so it's hard to kind of curtail. And by curtailing um, their abilities, you have you run the risk of demotivating them, letting them lose their self-confidence and things like that. I mean, children like that, they need, there's always something to learn. You know, I think the parents are focusing on the intellectual, but 
you know, there are will be other things outside the academic and intellectual that he's not good at. The child cannot be good at everything. So he's only three. Where is, where is his childhood? Where is his, you know, playing games, playing football, um, you know, that kind of stuff. While education is good, it really is sometimes more important to teach the child to be a child and let the child have a childhood. He can build stuff in the back garden. He can make holes and, you know, I don't know what he can do, but he can be creative in the backyard. You know, you can teach your child that, you know, the things where they're not good at, you can challenge them in that area and that will keep them stimulated. Um, I think if you focus on what they are good at and you get frustrated because they're getting better and better what they're already good at, you can kind of think, OK, you know, what else can I teach him? But they can actually teach him um, hone in on skills. You know, I don't know about social skills. I was even thinking that he could be a YouTuber, you know, go on YouTube and teach other three year olds about maths and stuff. That would be quite good. And the money he makes from that, I'm sure it'd be successful. The money he makes from that could go into a trust fund for his education as he grows older. I mean, there are um, there are resolutions, but it's whether or not people think outside the box or not. I think at the moment, the parents are focusing totally on his intellect and his academic. And it must be frustration because, like he said, you know, if you put a child in school that is gifted and over and above the other children, you know, it means that he could get bullied. It means that he could get bored. He could um, become frustrated. Um, he could be, his behavior could be disruptive or perceived as disruptive because they're not challenging him enough. So I can understand the parents' concern. Um, one another thing is that, you know, you can't always assume that the child is always going to be gifted. You know, it might be that 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 um, where he is now might um, not excel. It may remain the same or it might even dip. So you have to make the most of who he is now and see what you can do with what he is now. Like I said, I think um, having him as a YouTuber would be a brilliant idea. I don't know if they have age limitations. Um, I, I know we have young children on YouTube, um, but I don't know what the criteria is. But maybe that is a way that he could be teaching other children. That would be stimulating and he could do that outside school. Mainstream schools would have to be able to accommodate him, understanding that he is gifted and above average and make allowances for that. And, you know, see what they can do about it. I mean... You know, if the par the funny thing is, if the parents, they, they seem very intelligent, if they don't feel qualified or they actually are intimidated by his intelligence, a lot of teachers could be intimidated by his intelligence also. So maybe that's why some of the teachers may not even want to take him on. We don't know what the circumstances are. We do not know why these things happen. Um... Yeah, um, I also think it's important to praise him. I mean, he obviously, the parents are really, really good. That father, you know, he seems exceptionally um, good. So he does praise him, which is important. It's important to encourage him. I mean, to be honest, in teaching the child, the, the parents are actually learning themselves. In challenging the child, they are actually challenging themselves. I don't think they quite realise that they're actually benefiting from teaching the child because their knowledge is increasing, which is fantastic. Um, what else? Um, yeah, institutions will tend to want to exploit gifted children. Um, I don't know why that is. I mean, talking about private schools and all these schools, that are that, I don't know how much you said um, they cost, I've forgotten what he said, but, you know, everything so, seems so expensive. And like he said, what happens to other um, families who have talented or gifted children who can't afford the fees? Those children get dumbed down and they're the ones who could be seen as disruptive and could even turn out to be frustrated, angry and could even turn out to be a criminal. 
just because people haven't recognised and nurtured their abilities. It's really a difficult situation to be in. But, you know, they could... The, the parents could set up some kind of school. They could actually set up a school themselves or set up a competition, find other like-minded children, bring other children, you know, put an advert out. Is your child a gifted or talented child? Put them all together. You know that they have those competitions in the UK. Um, I forget what they call them. They call them, they're not super intelligent children, but you get these kids. And honestly... They do things like university challenge and stuff and they compete against each other. So maybe they could set up something like that. Um, solicit other children who are like minded and who are just as intelligent and have like competitions so they can challenge against each other. That would be stimulating. I'm not quite sure about the regulations behind that. And because of the age, he's so young, he's only three. I'm not quite sure the rules behind that. But it is something to think about or something to investigate as they get older. Um, what else? Yeah, um, gifted um, children will require extension tasks, i.e. those tasks that are set over and above the curriculum. Because the curriculum is so standard, it really doesn't cater for different levels of students. And that's why there's problems in schools, because they teach the same curriculum to everyone in that classroom based on age, not based on academic ability. And because of that, you'll have people who are slow, who feel left behind and who hide that behind aggressive and disruptive behaviour. And you also have those who are, you know, really... Um, acad oh, my goodness, something coming through my letterbox. You'll have those who are academically challenged, um, are, are really, really good. And they'll also will, they may also display the same disruptive behaviour, both for different reasons. So when you're putting a, children in a class, I don't necessarily think it should be according to the year, because then you're telling people that people of a certain year should have a certain academic ability and should behave in a certain way, when that's not always the case. People learn differently. So they should be assessing based on the academic ability of each child, not through the age. And I'm sure that if they did that, I'm sure that um, classes would proceed much more calmly, peacefully and with less disruption. That's just my humble opinion. Um, like I said, they need to stretch his imagination, teach him to create. OK, he's academic. Normally people who are academic um and intellectually they're kind of weak in the creative side so they can be um, working on his creative skills like i said teaching him to build and create things assembly tasks and things like that um what else did i say might say put him to be educated yeah some people have said you know why not put him to be educated with older children then if that's the case but like i said you know even though he's um intelligent or academic or intellectually high his social skills and his emotional skills are not on par with that. So you can't put somebody with low social and emotional skills with children of a higher, um, you know, higher, you know, older age, because they might see him as a threat. They might bully him. He won't be able to interact. He'll be isolated, and it could be more disruptive, and destructive. Um, he probably wouldn't have the ability to adapt. And children um, and the schools don't re generally don't want to admit children outside the year group, which I said before, it's not necessarily the um, best way to um, teach children. Um, issues um, of talented and gifted children face. Success does not also always mean popularity. You can get somebody who's as gifted as, and as wonderful as that little child. And yet, you know, you'll find children who bully him will be isolate him. You know, it's like teacher's pet. When we was at school, there was always the teacher's pet who knew everybody and everybody would mimic him and bully him or her and they'd isolate him or her. And it's almost like they're trying to dumb you down to their level. And that's what sometimes happens when children are exceptional. You'll find peer pressure 
um, tr um, tries to make them conform to be the norm, in quotes, and dumbs them down. They're unable to express. They become afraid to sh to answer questions. They they you know they feel restricted in being who they are. They end up with the wrong crowd and those kind of things. And that is the sad thing about um, gifted and talented children. That could happen if the parents don't have the wherewithal to send them to private schools and stuff. And a lot of people don't have that kind of money. Um, a lot of things with gifted children, sometimes they're misdiagnosed. I mean, they're calling that, um, I forget what they, that what they said he was. But, you know, they could actually diagnose him as a ADHD, autistic and all kinds. I think they said he was autistic, highly challenged autistic or something. But, you know, you don't know just because, you know, people love to give others labels. And when they don't understand something, they assign a label. Who are they to assign a label? A child is gifted and, talent and talented. He's above average. He's high ability. That's all. He doesn't have to be assigned a label. Um, yeah, so intellect can be more advanced than their social development. And that's one of the issues. Could be hard for him to mix and make friends. Similar to adults, though. You know, sometimes as adults, when we... Um, you know, when we are interested in a specific thing, you know, it could isolate us from other people. You know, you get people who um, believe in Buddha or they go into meditation and that would isolate those who are overactively minded. They probably think they're a bit loopy. So, you know, when people are different, they tend to isolate instead of, and you know, instead of being inclusive and learning from each other, they tend to think, oh, that person's a bit, you know, they're not normal, or, you know, once again, giving labels, judging, just because you're not the same, it doesn't mean that you, you should be an outcast or that there's anything wrong with you. And that's what we have a problem with generally. When people don't understand people of colour, of race, of ethnicity, it's the same kind of thing. They're considered outcasts because people don't get to know them. It's all a part of the same thing. People who are different are seen as outcasts. And instead of including them and, getting, and learning from them, and this poor little child, I don't know what will happen to him. I hope, you know, they will find a solution without you know, feeling too, um, without restricting him. Um, working class may not be challenging enough for talented and gifted children. They become bored, they daydream, sometimes they want to avoid school, um, they can develop disruptive behaviour, they can become confused, stifled, suppressed, and all things like that. Um, Gifted children um, do not usually fit into the special educational needs category because the special educational needs category is normally on the other end of the spectrum where um, they're challenged and they're unable to learn. They don't have the same level of literacy, but they don't have um, something for those who are above normal. And I think they should, you know, they should have something for that. They should have schools for special Special educational needs schools for, for children of high ability, not just low ability. Um, but all I can say is the parents um, must try not to get frustrated with the whole process. Assessments can be expensive, as the gentleman in the video said. And like I said, focus on what he can't do as opposed to what he can do in order to give him balance. And that's all for now. Bye bye.